Welcome to the month of July, which means many things around here. For starters, it's my birthday this month. It's also Metrocon month. So that also means it's eBay month. So look out for those sales. I'll post them on my Twitter when those are ready to go. But yeah, I get to spend the weekend listing things. But in the meantime, we have to get to the weekend first. And we can't close off the week without one more random review. This one being Revenge of the Fallen Dirge. Revenge of the Fallen still remains what I believe to be the weakest of the Transformer movie lines, but when they went away from the characters who are actually in the movie, it actually turned out they came up with some interesting figures. For instance, Dirge here, of course, is based on the classic Seeker, but he is in no way uh, his original vestige. This is more like a Harrier jet, and me, uh, if we've learned anything from Random Review, I'm not up on my vehicles of any kind. But I didn't know that, like, when I saw, like, the wing shape and this big heavy body, I didn't know there was an actual jet that looked like this. So that was kind of cool to find out. Haven't seen one with the X-shaped tail fins. That's a little bit interesting. But still, he is definitely a departure from what I'm used to with Dirge. And it's kind of a welcome thing. I always feel like Seekers should have branched out a long time ago into different vehicles to separate themselves out. At least different styles of jets. So he's cast in a very nice blue shade of plastic. There's a bit of a green tint to it in the light, and it has this bronzish gold paint uh, decoing all the trim and edges here, and a little bit of silver, just a little bit. A little bit of silver, a little bit of black. There's your Decepticon logo. It's the sharp version. That's the movie style. And we got another one, little one on this side of the cockpit and another one over here. A little bit of silver around the cockpit itself, which is translucent plastic, but... Done well, not complaining, not complaining, not harping. And you can see the cockpit molded in, which is a detail I always like when they include on these jets. It always feels like with this big open canopy, you definitely need to have that seat in there to kind of give it the right look. So the form itself is definitely an interesting jet. Uh, it does carry his bulk a little bit better since it's a bulkier style. You can still see plenty of under kibble. He's still uh, very much... You know, a Transformer jet with a bunch of stuff hidden where there's really no place to hide it, but hey, they tried. You can also see two missile launchers off to the side, which of course do fire off with a push of a button. I have a bad habit of leaving these in the launchers so I know whose is whose, and they come up a little bit warped, apparently. At least that's what I was told last time, uh, last time I noted that. But, yeah, two firing missiles, which I'm going to go ahead and detach now and put aside so we can get a a little bit of a cleaner look at the jet mode without them. Kind of needs them, actually, now that I think of it. He looks a little bit bulky without them. Kind of fills them out a little bit. But yeah, it's an interesting vehicle. I'm a fan. I do like I do like this a little bit. So I'm going to get him into robot mode now. And let's rem hope I can remember how to transform him, because it's been a while. Alright, so I'm going to pop out the wings, of course. And then the sides are going to come... Unpegged like so. Okay. On. There we go. I've just decided that from now on I'm just going to make grunting noises while I try to transform things that are being stubborn because eventually that will work, won't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably not. Alright, so the legs themselves have quite a bit of straightening out to do. He's got double hinges and he's got these things that flip out for his feet. A lot of things going on here, so. Mm. Eating around. Jeez, I never know what to do with the wings on here. This guy has like big kibble things on his legs that are his wings, so we will get to that here in a bit. The interesting thing to Dirge himself is that he's very asymmetrical in design. You can see as I transform all of this out arm, shoulder, shoulder, his cockpit actually does form one of his arms, which is really unusual especially when you're you're uh designing something that's more akin to one of the classic seekers you know you expect something uh you know well you'll see you'll see it actually does do something uh, a little bit a little bit expected all right so i get all of this uh all this unfolded and unpegged from the arm that should allow me to uh start swinging things around and get everything into its proper position Hang on. Move all that down. Fold that down. 
clip that in the arm. We can clean up, folding up all the kibble like so. Let's see if I can remember how this goes. This has been a while. I keep saying that it's been a while. All right. Head comes up along with these shoulder pylons, which are traditional to a seeker design. We've got still got this hunk in the back to deal with. Oh, that kind of folds up to there. Mm. I still never know what to do with those wings, unfortunately. So let's see if I can't uh, straighten this guy out. This is captivating YouTube video work, by the way. All right. Tell you what, let me get this guy stable and I'll cut to that. Okay, nice and stable and into his proper robot mode. This is our deluxe uh, dirge from the Transformer Revenge of the Fallen toy line. And as always, we start with a close-up of the head, which is a very interesting look on uh, the classic uh, cone head shape. Okay, I know it's going for the cone head shape, but it looks like a big squid. I, like that arrow shape is just not becoming of uh, becoming of the cone head. This is them trying to do the cone head thing in the movie line, and I don't know if it quite works or not. I'll leave that to you decide. This is more of a preferential thing, not quite my preference. It does have some translucent eyes for light piping, which uh, is very stinted because it only has that little slit in the back for actual light piping. So that's unfortunate. Luckily, his face is completely silver, so his eyes do still stand out. A little bit of red deco on the forehead, just because. In this mode, while you do see that obviously his vehicle mode nose cone and canopy became his arm, he still has that classic Seeker look to him. You do have the big shoulder pylons, as well as uh, some intakes on the front, and, of course, a tiny little cockpit for a chest. Completely fake has absolutely nothing to do with vehicle mode, and I don't know why you'd have a cockpit here and a cockpit here. This does seem to be just a wee bit distracting and uh, a wee bit inaccurate, but they forced it in, so he does have a little bit more of the look of a seeker. So I guess uh, I guess a little bit of the old and a lot of bit of the new going on here. I do appreciate the asymmetric design. It does give him a different profile and a very different feel than most uh, Transformer jets that I tend to play with. So that works out. It does leave him with some unusual arms, which we'll get into during the articulation. Uh, proportionally, he's very thin in many spots and very bulky in others. The legs are very bulky, especially the right arms as well. Very wide shoulders, but very scrawny arms, scrawny hips. He's got a bit of an unusual shape to him, which is something of a something of a common theme in Transformer movie lines. So that's what that has going on. It does have a lot more paint. A lot more yellow is showing through here, as well as some more silver for the chest. I do like the overall deco of the toy, so that works out pretty well. Uh, there's also... Uh, the gimmick, which is the Mech Alive, which if I rotate the arms up and down, you can see his nipple spin, which is what you always want out of a dirge toy. Now, you got gears in the chest, so he seems to have actual, like, working innards and such, which I've seen Mech Alive that actually is geared like that, and it works out fine, and that's good. And then I've seen Mech Alive where it's just a piece that's hollowed out. You can kind of see something inside, and that's that sucks. So, at the very least, he does have something a little bit interesting going on here. Okay, so, as for articulation, let's see. Well, we do have, uh, oh man, it's really stiff, but we do have a head rotation, so that's always good. No ball joint, just the rotation. Universal shoulders, thanks to a hinge as well as a swivel up here. You do have a bicep swivel, and then you have elbow joints, which have a great bend to them. An absolutely great bend in the elbow joints on both arms and you can even bend the hand inward on the right arm however it's uh, no wrist and it's uh, stuck in a bicep curler so unfortunately that's a little bit underwhelming there's nothing in the waist there's great range in the ball joints on the hips at least that works out pretty well not too wide but not to an un unnatural degree thigh swivel works you have Two hinges here at the knee, so you can digitigrade the legs a little bit should you want to. I prefer not to. 
and you also have rockers in the ankles as well as a rotation as well plenty of range in the foot you also have two hinges here as well as a swivel to do with whatever you want with the wings that are hanging off of his legs now we can just pin the missile launchers back into those and just call it a toy but you also can pin them into his arms which that one goes there into the screw hole and this one goes here above the elbow whoa that's why i don't fire missiles off on camera when i can't help it uh, so the unfortunate thing is the kibble on this side does keep him from aiming this one uh, in any you know, in any particularly useful direction but beyond that you can actually mount the launchers it is a very unusual mounting point I wish he could just use the hands, but they are molded to be a little bit more realistic without a big circle, you know, bored through them. But at least he can hold them, so he does have that going for him. So that sans one missile that's somewhere around here is Revenge of the Fallen Dirge. He's a fairly solid toy. He does a few things kind of weird, but I think he does enough unique things that it still keeps him interesting. And I do find it somewhat interesting that of all toys to carry through some of the G1 vestiges of the Seeker, it's a non-movie movie toy, and it's a Conehead Seeker. That, that alone gives him a little bit of distinctness, so good on you Hasbro, you made an interesting one.